Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin and San. I've been interested in this phenomenon of lay Zen practice for quite some time now. I don't have any firm numbers on it, but I am guessing that uh, Zen would probably shake out the same way as most uh, religious communities do in that the congregation outnumbers the uh, cleric or the minister or the priest or rabbi by a lot. I'm guessing that there are more lay Zen practitioners than there are Zen priests and so on. The Vimalakirti Nirdesa Sutra is a favorite of mine. If you haven't read, read it, I suggest you do so. And it's one of those Mahayana scriptures that is, let's say, embellished somewhat. There are parasols with jewels and, and flowers coming down from the sky and chairs with jewels on them. And it's, it's a pretty interesting piece of prose in and of itself. But the fact of the matter is that it also encompasses the Dharma teachings. Another thing that's interesting about it is that um, like the Heart Sutra, it isn't the Buddha himself that is expounding the Dharma. And at some point, yes, he does. But for most of it, it's... Uh, kind of a question and answer or a situation response uh, scenario between Vimalakirti and any number of disciples and bodhisattvas and um, other people that, that come by. And the, the gist of it in a really fast synopsis uh, is that Vimalakirti is unwell. He's manifesting as unwell anyway, because there is a point to him being unwell. And all of the um, lay kings and just general people, they come and visit and say, Hey, how you doing? Can I get you anything? Nice little bowl of soup, perhaps? And that's all good. And then the Buddha says, Hey, uh, Shariputra, why don't you uh, go up and inquire about Vimalakirti's health? And he and all the other uh, disciples and bodhisattvas are all, well, I don't think so. The last time I was with Vimalakirti, he kind of... You know, and in, in a nutshell, he basically gave them a smackdown for something that they thought they had right, and it turns out that they actually didn't. And one could conceivably say that uh, Vimalakirti was being, you know, kind of a holier than thou, you know, my practice is better than your practice, I know more, I have more wisdom, but that wasn't the case. Um, whatever Vimalakirti had, he would share freely <clears throat> according to the needs or the situation. Um, he would extend that from himself. He was very wealthy. He had a house. He had a wife and family, two chariot garage, no doubt. And 
he had this habit of like if you saw a negative behavior someone being greedy for example or uh, not that it's negative behavior but it's an undesirable circumstance that somebody was in poverty Vimalakirti for example would then in that case just be generous right Vimalakirti was you could say uh, a one percenter but in a non Asura like way he cared about the other 99% if there were a skillful way that he could assist someone either materially uh, financially uh, spiritually he would do it he was mr. moral moral although he was also one of those that in order to save hell beings would go into the hell realms like brothels and bars and whatnot so Vimalakirti's instructions throughout the entire sutra go on along these lines you know Shariputra uh, thinks he's got meditation down you know he's sitting there and he's all peaceful and he thinks to himself yeah here's some samadhi for you I got some samadhi going on and Vimalakirti would come along and say yeah no not so much here's what you need to be doing in fact, the, the word nirdesa in uh, the title of the sutra, the Vimalakirti Nidesa Sutra, is uh, instruction or suggestion or uh, you could say input maybe. So Vimalakirti goes on and one of my, my favorite sections is where Crown Prince uh, Manjushri, he has all these bodhisattvas and, and others nearby, and he asks them, how do you enter the Dharma gate of non-duality? And of course, all the bodhisattvas have their own answers, most of which are partially correct one could say um, and then he comes around and he asks the non-ordained the non-priest the non-monk the wealthy lay person Vimalakirti so What's your response? How does one enter the Dharma gate of non-duality? And here is Vimalakirti's response. Now, no, my camera didn't just freeze. I was actually trying to be as still as I possibly could just to instill that little bit of, eh, is he frozen or is he still good? What's going on? Uh, <laughs> so um, that was his entrance into the Dharma gate of non-duality, which for those of us who practice uh, Kongans in our school that uh, is akin to the either silent response or the uh, don't know response uh, complete with you know 
hitting the floor, yelling cats or ack. Um, so Vilma Likirti, in a nutshell, where I was headed with this, is that even though he's not a monk, he's not ordained, he's not official in any way, has wisdom. He has a lot of wisdom. He has, one could say, Buddha-like wisdom. Let me uh, read you a little section from it. I asked Venerable Vimalakirti, what do you mean by bestowal of the Dharma? He replied, the bestowal of the Dharma is beyond the element of time, having neither start nor finish, and each offering should benefit all living beings at the same time. This is the bestowal of the Dharma. Right? All affected equally. All benefited. I asked, what does this mean? He replied, this means that Bodhi springs from kindness, Maitri, toward living beings. The salvation of living beings springs from compassion, Karuna. The upholding of right dharma from joy, Mudita. Wisdom from equanimity, Upeksha. The overcoming of greed from charity perfection, Dana Paramita. Ceasing to break the precepts from discipline perfection, Sila Paramita, egolessness from patience perfection, Kshanti Paramita, relinquishment of body and mind from zeal perfection, Virya Paramita, realization of enlightenment from serenity perfection, Dhyana Paramita, realization of all knowledge, Sarva, Sarvajna, uh, from wisdom perfection, paj, prajna paramita, the teaching and conveying, uh, converting rather of living beings springs from emptiness. Non-rejection of worldly activities springs from formlessness. Appearance in the world springs from inactivity. Sustaining the right dharma from the power of expedient devices. The understanding of all things commensurate with neither acceptance nor rejection of them to realize their oneness from the karma of wisdom, the eradication of all troubles, kleshas, hindrances and evils from all karmas, the real realization of all wisdom and good virtue from the contributory conditions leading to enlightenment, all this pertains to the bestowal of Dharma. A bodhisattva holding this meeting that bestows the Dharma is a great almsgiver. He is also a field of blessings for all worlds. Now, I know that's got uh, some of Robert's favorite things in there, the immeasurables. Uh, <laughs> But it also has a lot of other things that, that we do. Now, okay, so if we go down this list, right? Uh, Bodhi springs from kindness toward living beings, okay? I want you to, like, keep track of this and check off the ones that you do and don't do, okay? So, uh, salvation from uh, using compassion Upholding of the right dharma from joy, mudita, right? Sympathetic joy. Wisdom from equanimity. The overcoming of greed from charity, practicing dana. Ceasing to break the precepts from discipline perfection, sila paramita or moral behavior. Uh, Eelessness from patience perfection, kshanti paramita. We can, we can all do that, right? 
relinquishment of body and mind from zeal perfection, virya paramita. Realization of enlightenment from serenity perfection, dhyana paramita, meditation, right? Realization of all knowledge from wisdom perfection, prajna paramita. The teaching of emptiness, the non-rejection of worldly activities, appearance in the world springing from inactivity, sustaining the right dharma from the power of expedient devices, upaya, like Vimala Kirti was being skillful when he manifested himself as being unwell. Uh, my point is this. I could go further down the list, but it's, it's not a PowerPoint presentation, so I'm not going to go through every single bullet point. But Vimala Kirti, the layman from Lichavi, the merchant, the guy who's well off, the one percenter, is able to do all of these things and exhibit wisdom that exceeds, in my opinion, uh, that of the bodhisattvas and disciples who were there on this particular day. So we went through that whole list and I have a question for you. As a non-monastic, which most of us are, as a non-monastic, which of these can't you do? Not which ones do you choose not to do? Which ones do you choose not to do because of laziness or inconvenience? But which ones are you totally incapable of doing? If you find that you've checked off in the yes column to all of those virtues, all of those behaviors, all of those perfections, all of those immeasurables, then why do you think that awakening is beyond you? 